In this edition, Daniel Block tells us how gambling is helping transform a community. And Jody Malin reports on the overlooked sport of cycling. We'll also have a sit-down interview with members of UNM's Poetry Slam team, and also Brent Boer explains why the isotopes are such a hot ticket over the summer. Plus, Janae Herrera tells us how radio stations are planning to survive the MP3 and satellite radio era. I'm Haley Vashek. And I'm Oliver Riggle. All this and more on Campus Report. <laughs> Local coverage. Student perspectives. At the University of New Mexico. From the KME Studios. This is Campus Report. The last thing people associate with casinos is giving money away. But Isleta Casino is helping fund many of Isleta Pueblo's new facilities, including medical clinics and a Head Start Center. Daniel Black reports. Since 2003, Isleta Pueblo residents have witnessed tremendous growth of their community's infrastructure. Isleta Pueblo's First Lieutenant Governor, Max Zuni, and veteran RN from Isleta Healthcare Isleta Clinic, Carol Olguin, highly attribute this growth to Isleta Casino. A lot of the resources that come in from the casino profits go to a lot of the projects that we have here in the Pueblo. Uh, the casino has been around for quite a few years, and every year, the quality of life for the community is improving and one of the examples is the uh, clinic itself. Um, I have been in nursing for over 34 years and here in the tribe for 22 and we've come a long way. According to New Mexico Business Weekly, Isleta Pueblo's new health care facility cost $5 million. The facility was entirely funded by Isleta Casino Profits. Olguin compares the new health clinic to the old health clinic. Um, previously, in before 03, we had a clinic of only uh, four exam rooms and um, just a small area where we had a medical records, limited pharmacy. And since we've moved into this clinic in 03, we now have three full-time family practice medicine doctors. We have um, six exam rooms. We've got two emergency bays where we can start IVs, do cardiac patients. We have an EMS system with paramedics that are on 24-hour call. Olguin expands on the services the current clinic offers to its patients. We have our own pharmacy, we have optometry, we contract podiatry. We have a dental unit with um, six chairs and we have a special orthodontist that comes in. Olguin says employee numbers have drastically increased since being in their new facility. We had a staff of maybe 15. Currently, we are operating with over 65 employees. Casinos have not only helped build health care, but they have also helped with education. Zuni says their Head Start building was fully funded by the Isleta Casino. The staffs, uh, certain wages and everything. But the facility is what uh, is totally funded by uh, assets from the casino. Zuni says there are plans for a judicial complex. Uh, one of the one of the new projects that we are building is a complex. It's called a uh, judicial complex. Uh, within that facility will be a police station, fire station, courthouse, administrative buildings, and a council chamber. Zuni says how they plan to fund this new facility. Uh, Ten percent we've received from state capital outlay and about 90 percent will come from funds from the casino. If it wasn't for casino funds, uh, we would not be able to build facilities like this. Olguin thinks the casino profits have done a lot of good and that a behavioral health unit is on its way. So um, definitely the casino funds have helped and it's always improving because um, currently we're trying to build on to the, the clinic itself and have a behavior health unit. This is Daniel Block reporting from Isleta Pueblo. Holding the first event of the 2008 National Collegiate Cycling Association, UNM's Lobo Classic invited cyclists to compete despite the cold conditions. Jody Malin gives us some information about the race and the often forgotten sport of cycling. Albuquerque recently hosted the 2008 Lobo Classic NCCA Collegiate and Non-Collegiate Race. This race gave riders an opportunity to train and compete against some of the strongest cyclists from across the country. The race was held at Balloon Fiesta Park on March 2nd. This was the first race to kick off the collegiate season. The race was broken into groups A, B, and C and by gender. 
Group A consisted of the strongest and most experienced riders, many of whom were from Fort Lewis College in Durango. UNM was represented by two riders, Matt Beck and Jesse Giordano. Nina Baum, a former member of the UNM cycling team, has been helping coordinate and promote the Lobo Classic for the last five years. Compared to previous races, the amount of participants has increased. It's growing. It's a lot. I mean, every year the race has gotten bigger. I think, I haven't done the calculations yet, but I think we had about 80 or 100 more riders, collegiate riders, this year than we did two years ago. And we had at least 60 more than last year, so it's definitely gotten bigger. Although the first race of the season is held in Albuquerque, very few riders are from the area. Compared to the amount of participants from Fort Lewis College, UNM can't keep up. You have teams like Fort Lewis that's three hours up the road and they're bringing down, they can field four men's A team time trials, which is, you know, 16 really fast guys. And, you know, we can't even put together one team time trial for the UNM team. You know, they're feeding their programs differently and getting a lot more riders in from other states and just they have more intrinsic growth in the sport in their state. The competitiveness of the sport between schools and individuals doesn't take away from the joy of riding. I really like the collegiate scene. It's really different from, you know, the local race scene, which is mostly kind of old guys for the most part. And I feel like the collegiate scene is a lot more encouraging of women getting involved in the sport. And it's a much more supportive and friendly and mellower environment. Although UNM had small representation in the race, Matt Beck placed in the top 10. With a strong finish in the first race of the collegiate season, he has high hopes for the rest of the year. This is Jody Malin reporting. UNM made history this year by becoming the first university to host and win the College Union National Poetry Slam. Reporter Katisha Mercier sat down with two members of the UNM team. Slam poetry is an artistic form of expression rapidly gaining popularity. Over the weekend, the University of New Mexico hosted the College Union 2008 National Poetry Slam. And Saturday night at the El Rey Theater, the UNM Slam Poetry team took first place. Here to talk to me about the event are Lobo Slam Secretary Hakeem Bellamy and Lobo Slam President Damien Flores. Welcome and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now the National Collegiate Poetry Slam, how many universities and colleges actually participated in this event? Uh, there were 23 schools from around the country that came and uh, competed here at UNM for the College National Championship, which is the most um, of any college national poetry slam and we had one team that was comprised of alternates from the other teams uh, so we can make an even 24 to keep the the tournament uh, or an even number so we can uh, not have any complicated math involved with anybody else but yeah so 23 schools total very cool and so now what were the four teams that made it to the final uh, that was the University of Pennsylvania University of New Mexico um, University of Wisconsin-Madison and SUNY Oneonta. Very cool. Now, what was the feeling like um, backstage or even in the audience between poetry and like between poets especially? Was there any tension? Was it competitive? What was that like? Well, before the slam actually happened, I remember we all kind of, all the competing poets gathered outside um, the El Rey and we all kind of huddled up and uh, kind of had this really cool moment that was actually sparked by one of the kids from the um, University of Wisconsin team. And um, we all kind of had this nice little shared circle and uh, but you can still tell that there was a, um, a little bit of a competitive edge uh, more so of some teams and others mm -hmm. but for the most part it was pretty like you know competition was there but like I don't think really that many people were hung up on it but it, you know that's it's a competition so there was the presence of it regardless very cool now this is clearly not the only event of poetry slamming um, that is available in New Mexico uh, Hakeem tell me a little bit about other events that are gonna be coming up in you know locally or statewide well the biggest the biggest event which is kind of like our, our crown jewel in a poetry slam community is our city finals and the Albuquerque city finals which is determines the team that will represent the city of Albuquerque at the 2008 national poetry slam in Madison Wisconsin Wisconsin. That slam off is April 19th at the Natural, National excuse me, Hispanic Cultural Center in the Journal Theater. Uh, I believe, Damien, correct me if I'm wrong, 7? Yes. Sir. Starting at 7 p.m. <laughs> starting at 7 p.m. on April 19th. Very cool. And are you guys both going to be competing in this? I am not. I've actually already qualified for the Silver City team. Ah. So I'll be representing a different city in, Alba, in, excuse me, in New Mexico at the National Poetry Slam. But Damien is, is in the semifinals. And the semifinals are what precede the finals. So there's 20 poets. He's one of 20 poets in the semis, which will be whittled down to 10 or 12, I believe. Something like Something that, like that <laughs> for finals. And then that will be whittled down to four that will represent Albuquerque. Very cool. Well, we'll be sure to catch you guys all. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. With temperatures rising in the Duke City, that means one thing is upon us. Albuquerque Isotopes Baseball. Brent Boer swung by the ballpark to see what makes the Topes such a hit. 
Since its first season in 2003, the Albuquerque Isotopes have drawn the attention and adoration of a wide group of local residents. In doing so, the minor league baseball franchise has seen its popularity amongst the Albuquerque sports world soar, so much so in fact that those in the franchise like Steve Hurlbert are a bit surprised by the Topes' surging success. I, I, the success of the Isotopes, I think, has exceeded everyone's expectations from uh, five years ago. It's just the support from the city, um, both in terms of the support of the administration of the city as well as the support of uh, fans and people here in Albuquerque and really statewide in New Mexico has, has been tremendous. Fans of the Isotopes come out to support their team for a number of reasons. For University of New Mexico student Karina Wilson, the allure of the ballpark and other factors are enough to make her a frequent visitor. I go to the Isotopes games eight, nine, maybe ten times a year because the games are just so exciting and the Isotopes are my favorite team and the players are pretty cute. Another big draw for the Isotopes came in the summer of 2007 when the city of Albuquerque was elected to host the AAA All-Star Game. Hurlbert says that the event, dubbed the All-Star Fiesta by Isotopes organizers, was the franchise's coming out party to the rest of the country, in large part because of its telecast over ESPN2. I think that's what really it gave us kind of a boost nationally. And what we saw almost directly after the All-Star Game was a spike in merchandise sales and, and that kind of thing from people all over the world who had seen the ESPN2 broadcast and uh, wanted to know more about the Isotopes. After the momentum the franchise received from the interest in the All-Star Game, the organization has continued its efforts to improve the overall environment at the games. Every year, our focus is to make different improvements to Isotopes Park to enhance uh, the visit of the fans. Some of this season's improvements include additions to the ballpark's kids area, complete with an amusement park style ride of the beloved team mascot Orbit, as well as the installation of a six foot bobblehead statue of the mascot, which should be a hit with the fans of the Isotopes, much like the team has been a hit with the city of Albuquerque for the past five years. Reporting from beautiful Isotopes Park, this is Brent Boer. With new ways of getting music through MP3 players, XM and Sirius, could we be saying goodbye to old fashioned radio? Janae Herrera has a story on how the radio industry is keeping up with modern times by integrating new ways to communicate with listeners. Could that in fact be true? With all the new technologies out there, could an old technology like listening to the radio finally be put to rest? Radio is so dead. I never listen to the radio anymore. It's always XM radio or Sirius. I would say that Radio's not dead. I mean, I today I uh, a dozen times heard radio stations. In in uh, we took a tour of a hospital today at uh, UNM, and uh, the nurses were listening to the radio at their desk. Uh, cars, every car I was in today had a radio on. So I mean, radio's alive and well. I think uh, we just need to uh, make sure that we continue to grow with all the other technologies. And growing with those technologies could be tough, especially since there's so much competition out there to listen to the radio in the car or I listen to my mp3 player if I'm on a long trip maybe CDs um, at home I like the computer I like to listen to uh, streaming audio on the computer or my own CDs mixes that I put together but Eddie Haskell FM program director at Citadel Communication says that they've already thought of ways to integrate these new technologies like using texting and turning to the web one of the things, uh, there, there's a, uh, a lot more emphasis on websites now. Uh, people are online all the time. Uh, texting, text messaging, all of our stations uh, are doing texting and more ways to communicate with the, the audience. And I think, again, that's what's important is uh, staying connected with people rather than being an AOL channel that is streamed in or a satellite radio that's streamed in from Washington or New York. Uh, you can pick up your text phone and talk, or your pick up your cell phone and text a request in. 3KOB FM, the Pop Music Channel. You want to win Lincoln Park tickets? You could do it right now. Get your cell phone, text 68683, and text Lincoln, and you could win those Lincoln Park tickets right now. 93.3 KOB FM, the Pop Music Channel. Radio DJ Carlos Duran thinks a lot of these new technologies are trends and could eventually phase out. Uh, radio is headed up. I think that... Um, you know, we had this phase where satellite radio came in and um, and really, you know, scared a lot of people in the radio business away. And 
we started embracing you know doing HD radio and stuff like that and those uh, those those companies have kind of just you know went away and merged with each other and radio is still going strong uh, the technology has just changed so much uh, but again the, the bottom line is what's coming out of your speakers hasn't changed too much I mean we've just evolved kind of with the technology and with uh, with the needs of the people but uh, it's still you know you hop in the car turn it on push the button and there it is so the radio industry is well aware in order to stay alive they must keep up with today's technology this is Janae Herrera reporting Thanks for watching tonight. I'm Haley Vashek. This is Campus Report, and I'm Oliver Riggle. But I've got some bad news for Haley. You never close your eyes anymore when I kiss your lips. <laughs> There's no tenderness like before in your fingertips. Because, baby, you know it. <laughs> You're trying hard not to show it. Baby, but baby, 